All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we've been uh, sitting down most of the broadcast. We've been talking with Mr. Frank Gilbert. He is a libertarian. He's a former United States Senate candidate, a uh, Arkansas gubernatorial candidate. Frank, it's been a great show. I really appreciate you being with us. I've certainly enjoyed it. It's uh, the best evening I've had in a while. Okay, good, good. As we see the sunset out the windows of the Marble Palace here in this, uh, like you said, a beautiful uh it's a beautiful building, yes. you know, but it's also it makes people feel like uh, they're pretty important, or it it can can do that very yes. easily. It can turn a young man's head and sometimes an older man's head to think that they're uh, more important, perhaps, than they really are. Yeah, we've seen that, you know, if you think at Mike Neal and John Woods, and you yeah. know, this whole this is a complete mess. But I'm interested. Uh, you were you were witnessing this conversation. We had Josh Waters tell us what just happened in Senate Judiciary Committee. Paul Calvert as well. What are your thoughts on the Second Amendment? And this is a low-hanging fruit issue Republicans should all agree on. Yeah, this is... Regardless of what the governor thinks. This is one where they may get hurt and they may get burned on this if they're not careful, if they don't play this right. Well, it, they, they've taken care of that by getting the NRA behind, behind, mm-hmm. behind it. They figured it out. And, you know, you're the one that said last hour you talked about how Governor Hutchinson is... Cutthroat. I don't know. I don't know if those are the exact words you use, but po- politically, he is pretty hard to contend with. Yes, he's uh, he's a serious politician and a loathsome enemy. I wouldn't, you know, I want to wouldn't want to be on the personal side um, against him in politics. I don't mind being on policy differences with him, but. Uh, he has the capacity to to wreak revenge and the willingness to do so. Yeah, well, um, he, I, I guess, you know, you look at an organization like the NRA. Last week, I have never seen big government establishment Republicans more worried than when the NRA was backing Linda Collins' Smith Amendment. Mm-hmm. And now, all of a sudden, they, they pull support, and they're claiming that Trent Garner's amendment, which still requires additional training to exercise your Second Amendment rights on top yeah. of the training you already have to have, they're now saying, oh, okay, th- w- this is a better bill because it expands it. And I'm telling you, this is, some, this is a tap dance. I mean, this is, you can tell this was a tight rope to walk. And the NRA is not the end-all and be-all of the Second Amendment. They've proven in the past that they'll uh, bend one knee to the tyrant but won't bend the other. Uh, They make decisions that I don't understand, frankly. They're willing to give up part of my rights, um, in their estimation, an unimportant part. Do you have an example of that? Uh, This is the prime example of it. You know, they have always been in favor of additional training for citizens to exercise their rights now sometimes they want to provide the training <laughs> which is which is a nice little hookup if you can get it but they uh they don't see the second amendment in the same light that i do how do you see it frank i see it as an absolute right that uh like religious freedom is one of the cornerstones you know the Keeping them from quartering troops in my home is an important issue, but not one that has become an issue in my lifetime or a few centuries, I think. But the right to keep and bear arms is the one that makes all of the others possible. You can, you know, the Soviet Union had a constitution that guaranteed everything that ours did. The only difference was there was nobody with a gun to make them honor it. They had a beautiful constitution that was never instituted. The people never saw the freedom that it gave them because the dictator chose otherwise. The only thing that keeps us from being in that same position, I believe, ultimately, is our ability to keep a gun, protect ourselves from enemies, foreign and domestic. We saw, we're wrapping things up here, but we saw a perfect example of that, whether you agree with them or not, but the, uh, the landover, uh, landowner, Clive and Bundy, Oh, when they had the, the standoff with the Bureau of Land Management, regardless of where where you think it was, they were armed and the government was armed, and they were putting they were pointing guns at each other. And for some reason, the Bureau of Land Management backed off yes. for a time at least. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. And it's only because the other side had what means of defense. Absolutely, and they backed off until they could get a better tactical situation. Yeah. Only. Yeah, that's exactly right. 
Well, Mr. Frank Gilbert, I appreciate it. I know you made the trek up to Little Rock to sit down here and talk with me. I'd love to do it again. Uh, I would look forward to it anytime. So uh, we appreciate it, sir. And, um, you know, do, do you have any – you're going to – we we got less than a minute. Are you going to run? Are you going to run for something Oh, yeah, else? I'll be yeah. running for something. I don't know what. It'll be down ballot. Uh, okay. The, the Libertarians have lots of good candidates, and one of them needs to step forward and run for governor right. this time. And, of course, the Libertarian uh, Convention, once every two years, this April the 8th. I understand. I know Conduit's going to be there, uh, and so we're going to have a good time. So, Amen. Come party with the Libertarians yeah, there in we April. Go. Frank Gilbert, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we got, for those of you listening on Mountain Talk 97, you've got one more hour coming your way next, uh, the one we recorded it for. For the rest of Arkansas, We can't do this show without you. Thank you for listening from the Marble Palace, Arkansas. Be safe.